are you jumping off the Adobe train and looking for an alternative to your old Adobe apps? Is Lightroom the only thing stopping you from bailing on that pricey Adobe subscription? If you're prepared to give up a lot of the bells and whistles of Lightroom for the sake of a single, very reasonably priced Mac only app, then Musebox might just be the answer. I paid my own money in order to test this app and to offer my honest opinion on its capabilities. Is it good enough to fill those big old Adobe boots or is it more like a pair of knockoff Crocs? Functional, but leaving you longing for the real deal. Musebox is a very new app, got its version one release in June this year and has seen eight feature and bug fix upgrades since then, bringing us to version 1.0.8, which is what I am reviewing. It is a Mac only app and is referred to by its developers as a digital asset manager for organizing, editing and sharing digital media. In that sense, actually shares more in common with something like Adobe Bridge than Lightroom, though it does have some basic editing capabilities. Musebox separates file storage from organization. You can group files from different locations into one box, like combining photos from your home folder with photos on an external drive. This is a surprisingly neat way of creating cross-media libraries, cherry-picking the photos you want based on their content, not their location. If you already have files organized in finder folders, you can use script droplets to automate a big import, efficiently converting your existing folder structure into Musebox's system. Alternatively, you can simply manually import your photos from wherever they are on your system. You can import photos into your Musebox library from a variety of locations. In this instance, this is a gallery that I made in Apple Photos called YouTube, and I can import directly from there. Alternatively, you can just browse to a folder on your computer. This is an export of some of my top rated images, which I've output to a SSD. My advice to you, if you're gonna buy this app, is to import your, all your photos in small chunks maybe a month at a time or even less, and then it should go swimmingly. Just don't expect it to ingest a vast number of photos with a speed that something like Lightroom or Peak2 does. In my testing, I found the import process to be fairly ponderous. And in fact, when I asked it to ingest a year's worth of photos, about 20,000 images, it basically gave up. So if the price point of features of this app appeal to you and you have a decent sized portfolio, I strongly suggest you use the scripts supplied by the developers to import everything. In terms of the interface, I found Musebox to be both nimble and well featured. It has a traditional design with file management on the left, a viewer in the middle and tools on the right. Once you've got your photos imported into Musebox, or at least indexed in it, because you don't actually have to move any files, the interface is actually nice and snappy. It's quick to use. If I resize the thumbnails, for instance, it's super quick. It's very logically laid out. You know, you've got your little tile view here, or you've got a split view where you can click on the images, or you can go to single view. We'll also change the sorts order to date, rating, or flagged. If I click on a photograph, I can see the exit date right over here. And there's even a little map, which I can zoom out onto the view the location of my photograph. I like the tidy design employed by the developers for the tiled view. I commend them for choosing a crisp font that shows all the important exit data under the thumbnail. Yes, the traditional view modes are in there, but there's also a multiple and a compare mode. Compare mode is supposed to be synchronized with zoom and panning, but I couldn't get that working. I have no complaints about the interface at all, and while it's early days for the app, 
I feel the developers have got a strong foundation down to build upon in future releases. One drawback to Musebox is that it only supports those raw file formats supported natively by the Apple RAW decoder. That's bad news for me, because Apple don't think Fujifilm RAW files are worth the effort of adding to the decoding architecture. I did test mine DJI Mavic 2 Pro and Canon 7D2, and those work well. You could, of course, use the usual non-compliant RAW file workaround of transcoding into a DNG file first using Adobe RAW Converter or DxO Pure RAW 4, and then you'd have no dramas. If you're looking for a Lightroom replacement, then you'll be looking for raw editing tools alongside the asset management. And while Musebox doesn't get within a mile of Lightroom's editing capabilities, there is a rudimentary edit tab built into Musebox which offers the essentials for tweaking your raw files. Musebox has a simple little raw editor built into it, which you can select by going to the edit tab on the main photo viewing screen. Got the usual suspects in here. We can uh, drop highlights down, bring up the shadows, vibrance, touch of saturation, maybe crank the contrast a little bit. That one seems quite heavy-handed slider. We've also got this selective color tool down here and you can select from lightness, chroma, hue and tints. So if I wanted, for instance, to lower the lightness of this blue in the sky, I can use the eyedropper to select it and then go to lightness and just drop the brightness value down slightly to darken it. While those edit tools won't satisfy the kind of photographer that's used to something like DxO Photo Lab, it's a solid little toolbox that contains all the essentials you need to do some basic raw edits. You won't find any high-end tools such as an AI-enabled conversational text search option in this app, but like all the other core features, it does have a solid basic search tool. There's a surprisingly comprehensive little search tool built into Musebox, which you can summon up with the old Command F key. And by default, we've got some ratings text flag, so whether it's a pick or not, exif searches and date searches. If you want to really kind of drill down into the search, you can add any rules you'd like to the list and they'll appear underneath. It works pretty well. So for instance, if I only want to see my five star photos, I can crank that to the right and you can see that the preview thumbnails in the background updated instantly just to show those shots. I can also search say on EXIF data, run the ISO in there and just say I wanted to find just my low ISO shot. So everything under 200 ISO and the images appeared in the background. Once you've finished cataloging, keywording and tagging your photographs, you'll probably want to either edit or export them. Asset managers are, after all, merely a bridge between your portfolio of images and whatever purpose you have in mind for them. To do that in Musebox, you can right click on any of your images, select edit with application and then select the app that you want to edit. It's all quite simple. And then if you want to export the file, it's the same kind of deal. Select export version and you can then configure the file format. Let's choose a TIFF uh, and the color profile if you want. As you can see, it's pretty full featured. Uh, the sizing that you want to use, you could say fit the long edge to 2000 pixels if you were saving this for social media. Uh, and then you can just click on the export version and it will output the file in that format. I must admit that my initial impressions of Musebox, that it was as limited as the price tag suggested, were constantly confounded. And I kept on discovering cool new features in the app that add greatly to its usability. The highly configurable metadata view, for instance, gives you an excellent list-based snapshot of your photos which you can sort as easily as you would a spreadsheet. The excellent stacking tool works along similar lines to Lightroom, enabling you to group together images by capture time or using any arbitrary grouping you like. 
I even prefer the way Musebox displays these stacks in a grid view to Adobe's implementation. The Keyword Sets tool enables you to create a group of often used keywords and quickly and easily apply them to photographs using a special Keyword Buttons toolbar that you show and hide with the D key. Like Lightroom, it also supports video files and yes, even has a trim and split clip tool. As you can see, Musebox is a surprisingly powerful and versatile app with an impressive array of capabilities and a strong feature set. It's the first non-Adobe app I've used that actually supports stacked. So you can keep your panos, focus stacked or exposure stack sequences tidily grouped together. The search tool is capable and fast and backed up by hierarchical keywording and fully customizable filtering rules. It has all the management tools you really need to enable you to pick, rate, tag, color code, and keyword your images. In use, it's a speedy little app, but the only real issue I had was with the slow imports. Hopefully that's something the developers can address in future updates. The capabilities of Musebox are all the more amazing when you consider that the developers, Brush Pixels, are currently only asking 10 US dollars, that's 16 Australian bucks, for a single fee, use forever license. It does say that's an introductory price though, so if you're interested in the app, I strongly suggest you get in now, while it's the same cost as a couple of skinny lattes. It's terrific to see a developer working to create an alternative to Lightroom, and given the aggressive release schedule we've seen so far, I'm sure that Musebox will only go from strength to strength. And that will do us for this look at Musebox. If you ditched Adobe, what do you use for your asset management now? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got value from this content, please do hit the old like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Until the next time guys, ta-ta.